Welcome to Pop Pop Shop. Hey, it's Scott with Pop Pop's Wood Shop. So, long story short, my X Tool P2 has been really, really weak here the past few weeks. Uh, it's getting more and more difficult to cut anything. So, I kind of figure that my CO2 tube has about almost 700 hours on it of jobs. Um, and it's just not. Uh, I think it's just weak, long story short. So I ordered a new one, came in today. It's already late in the afternoon here today, so tomorrow I will tear down the P2. I don't know if I'll go through a complete install kind of thing or how I'm gonna do it. Just have to see how, how much is in it to do it. Um, but anyway, we'll we'll go from there. So those of you that own P2s or X-Tools in general, you know how well they come packed. And, uh, and they get broke even then, you know, they get dropped and whatnot. I kind of figured this to be shattered in half by the time it got here because it's not the normal X-Tool packing. Usually this would be nothing but foam. There's no way for anything to hurt it. Well, what do you know? It's all in one piece. Okay. There is the tube. So, uh, I'll box this back up. I just wanted to verify that it was in one piece so I could get another one coming if not. And uh, we'll box it back up and then we'll, we'll tear apart the P2 tomorrow. And I don't know, uh, I don't know how much I'll get done because I actually have a show coming up that I'm trying to get ready for. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. We'll tear into this a little bit later and I'll bring you all back. Okay, we're back at the computer. Um, just wanted to show you. There's already a few videos by Xtool and some other folks on how to replace this tube. So there's no sense trying to reinvent the wheel. I'll just hit the highlights on my particular instance. If I run across something that's not covered in one of these videos, then I'll, I'll put that on there. But uh, just to give you the general feel of it. All right, so my computer, and th these are in device settings if you're looking for the times and hours that the machine's been working. So I got 686.9 hours of work time. And I've done 1,919 jobs. And it's been sitting there doing a whole bunch of nothing for 2,300 hours. So. No big deal, because a lot of times I forget it and walk away from it. Anyway, um, so that's the stats on how long this tube has lasted. You know, I wish there was a place that I could make a note, tube replaced at 686.9 hours. So I'll have to do that probably in a spreadsheet on Excel or something like that. But there's that information. Now, I didn't want to start it up, but unfortunately I did. So let me shut the machine off, and we will uh, go over to it and start tearing it Okay, apart. the camera's in the bed of the P2. You're looking at the back wall all of it. These screws, the most difficult ones you can have to get out, that's the correct set. And they are the Allen wrench. Now, what I do, and it's just, you know, I didn't see this in anybody's videos, and it's just experience. I put a catch rag down here so if I drop a screw at least it gets caught here and it doesn't end up going somewhere where I can't hardly get to it so uh, I'm undoing all these and then once that's done I'll remove the back cover okay you're looking from the top of the P2 down and you can see how dusty dirty my CO2 tube is now this machine is in a wood shop so I'm constantly fighting the dust. I, I desperately want to get it into its own environment, but you know, just takes time. So anyway, I'm gonna clean this as I go because it's never been cleaned back here. And while I got all this out, might as well clean it up the best I can. Just so you know, your screws on the back are about an inch long. Your screws on the inside are maybe a quarter inch. I use the magnetic tray to keep everything in its place. 
in case I drop it, bump it, whatever, I don't lose those screws. All right, let me get started. Okay, looking down the linear length of the tube, this cover, and when you see the, the X-Tube video, it looks like, oh yeah, this, this slides apart and da 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 da. No, that's not the case. Your stuff's been on there probably over a year. These don't like to come off, and these hose fittings, darn sure, don't like to come off. So it takes a little bit. You gotta finagle them to get them to come off, but they will. Okay, come. so it came off. You can see. And what I like to do, and this is not a new idea, you do this in automotive world all the time. I take the screwdriver and I go in beside the glass and I just go around the tube to loosen this. You gotta be careful you don't puncture this and darn sure be careful you don't snap this. So, and then I use, to hold the tube up so I can get to this, I use their little end cap. I just use it as a brace. Works great. Okay, let me get these others off and we'll continue on. Okay, in the event you drop the tool or a screw down into this cavern, don't freak out. You don't have to remove this whole lower section. This is a magnet, a bendable magnet, and the screw is kind of held right there. That And you use a flashlight, a pen light, that's what I use, so I can see down the hole. Anyway, I lost a screw down there and I lost the tool all in one shot. So you just use the uh, flexible magnet, go down there, grab it, pull it out, and keep on keeping on. One, your new tube will come with new upper rubber grommets for the tube holder. So those that are affixed to you, the previous tube, don't even waste your time Three, trying to two, get your own moth. They're on there, but good. Okay, new tube going in. And on the end, here's a little warning label for you. Remove that before flight. So there you go. I like to use, and I'm not saying you have to, I just overly precautious rubber gloves um, so I don't get any skin oils on the uh, tube. And that's just probably over cautious. Okay, see, as I'll admit it this deep, uh, it only makes sense to clean a mirror. And I clean this mirror, and you can see there's some kind of spot on it from something. So, 600, almost 700 hours, I'm going to go ahead and replace all three mirrors. New tube, realign it, uh, hopefully it'll be better than new. Okay. So, we'll She's, see. Uh, so, let me get out my done. new mirrors. I filled it full of water again. Now, just me. I do not use antifreeze in this because I'm in southeast Texas. I'm in a climate controlled shop. It's not going to freeze, so I don't worry about it. But I do use distilled water. So that's, that's the name of the game for this. I will put this cover back on. I'm going to replace the other two mirrors inside of it. And then we're going to test it. And see if it cuts Wait, like it used to move cut. Move my laser so it's cutting the exact center of the hole, so it's all good now. Uh, which I've done a million times, but we're about to test it on a real life cut, and we'll see what we get. So let me put a circle on the uh, on the surface here and see how it cuts. So let's test. We're gonna do 100, this is quarter inch MDF I'm cutting. And I'm gonna cut it at 100% power. And I'm gonna cut it at a speed of 16 and I'm going to do one pass on one and see what we get and then right beside it I'm going to do two passes and I can live with two passes it's 12 that I kind of draw the line because that's what it was doing before I replaced the tube I was making new uh, 
stands for the booth. And it was taking forever, ever, because I'd have to do 12 passes to get it cut. And then it's charred all the fire, so you got to kind of clean it up. So, what do you do? All right, so let's change this to two passes for that one. Same power, same speed, 116. Second one will be two passes. The first one will be uh, uh, one pass. We'll get us a distance, see what it says. This XCS update, I hate when they move all the buttons around and change everything. You gotta learn it all over again. It's kind of a chore. I'm not gonna say it's better or worse, okay, just so it is what it is. Alright, one pass didn't go all the way through. Two passes didn't go all the way through. It almost did, I can see the line. So now we're gonna do three passes on the same. And what I'm going to do is do another test in the upper left-hand corner that's closest to the beam, and uh, because that's that's the nature of this this machine, it just doesn't seem to like the um, the far right bottom corner. It just doesn't seem to like it. So that's all right. We'll uh, we get these selected and move them a little bit. And let's change it. To three passes. Change that one to four passes. See if that gets through it. Now I could slow it down to uh, creepy crawly slow, go down to a five and get it, I'm sure. Um, it just makes the cut that much longer though. So I'm just trying to find out where the sweet spot is. And, uh, I'm going to do one in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to make that a one pass at 16100. See what we get. See how this works on this R. <clears throat> our, let's see, our four pass, 116 four pass, quarter inch thick, MDF, it cut it. Yay. Our three pass, it did not. It, it's, it's close, but it didn't cut it all the way through. And our circle in the upper left, one pass, 116, um, with one pass, it didn't cut it. So, let's find out what happens when we drop this. Wah, let's try 10. And I know it's going to say, oh, fire, fire, yeah, whatever. Let's move this up here. We'll move this over here. Okay, I'm set up, ready to process. Um, of course, I'm getting a warning of a fire, possibly, because I'm going so slow. 10 is the number that this thing's, you know. I've never had a fire. I've cut as slow as three. I've never had a fire. Fire, this test, uh, the 110 speed and one pass, it cut it in the upper left hand corner. The 100 power, 10 speed, three passes, far right hand corner, it cut through. So now let's take and uh, I'll run one more in this corner, far right hand corner. But we're going to change it to one pass because it can do it in the upper left hand corner. And hands down, this is far better than what it was a week ago. Um, a week ago, I was doing nothing but screaming at it. So let's uh, let me tell this it's not output because we know where our sweet spot is. Let's process this. Okay, final test. The yes. results are in. It cut far right hand corner 100% power one pass at 10 speed so 
far, far, far better than what it was last week. Last week, I was cutting at five, 100% power, and uh, was doing 12 passes to get through quarter inch. So, replacing all the consumables um, has brought it back to life. That's a great thing. It's just a very expensive thing. Tube is roughly, anywhere, depending on where you catch it at a sale or whatnot, anywhere from $350 to $400. I think the lenses ran me like $60. Bucks. Um, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. The mirrors ran me about $60. Bucks. The lenses, I know, cost me $60. So, there it is, you know, just part of the, part of the maintenance and upkeep of a CO2 laser. So, that ends it for this video. Um, I will have some new stuff coming out. I'm going to uh, be making a video probably uh, Thursday, which is tomorrow. Um, we've changed our booth and we're, we're bringing some new things in. So what I'm gonna do is show our loading on the trailer and at the show itself, how we're gonna do things. My wife's come up with some great ideas. They've worked, we've tried them two or three times. We wanted to make sure we weren't just throwing out information, gee whiz, it happened once. No, it's every time we've done this in the booth, the results have been good, so. That's a win. All right, that's all I got. We'll see you in the next one.